What is up guys and gals, Patrick back with another video and uh, today I am reviewing Tribute Properties. So Tribute Properties is a residential and commercial real estate business hustle, if you if you will, um, in the North Carolina area uh, and Wilmington. And so they have a bunch of different apartment complexes around the city. And uh, if you think of sort of your, your standard cookie cutter appearing um, corporate apartment complex, that's Tribute Properties, at least on the surface. And so I'm not gonna name the actual site uh, where I stayed, but it was a Tribute Property. Um, and I'll just, uh, I'll just tell you my experience there. So uh, the first time I walked into a Tribute Property, uh, I stood in the lobby for a couple of minutes. It was like 1.45 on a Friday. And I could hear a staff member like, rummaging around in their little break area, break room, and uh, nobody came out. And uh, so I just left. <laughs> and so I, I continued my search elsewhere uh, in a different city. And I was like, well, looks pretty bleak up there. So I just went back and I tried and I, and I tried again. I think I called him this time and I uh, got through. Somebody talk, talked to me and I let him know I was looking for a, a single bedroom that was accessible, trying to avoid those, uh, you know, massive uh, curb step offs in North Carolina, where it's, of course, it's prone to flooding. And and yes, uh, the property did did flood, not my apartment, but the property did uh, in my time there. Um, and so eventually got it hooked up. Uh, it took like 10 days to get in there. And I came in, okay, and I had rental assistance through an organization called volunteers of America. And so they were giving me rental assistance and I was, we were trying to coordinate all this and it, that was actually quite a challenge. But I remember that the ladies in the office, when they heard that they made sure to let me know that I was sure lucky as a disabled veteran to be who, who had been living in his car for a year to be getting rental assistance, right? I'm just so lucky. My, now, mind you, I was working a full-time job at the time, living in my car, okay? And I was inspecting roofs. So I don't see those ladies getting up on any roofs and I don't think they will anytime soon. They don't appreciate stuff like that. And we'll get to that regarding Tribute Properties and their owner, Mark Maynard, here in a second. So um, so anyways, we get it done. They make sure to let me know that I'm, I'm the lucky one. I'm getting some help from this Volunteers of America organization, which by the way, never once paid my rent on time and, and created hell for all of us, okay, throughout this experience. <laughs> and so, and that was one of the things I messaged them and I was like, it's absolutely unacceptable that this is happening, you know, like, and, and it was part of the reason why I just decided to leave eventually, but I'll get to that in a second. So uh, my apartment was on the first floor was supposedly accessible. I don't know if it was truly accessible or sort of, eh, there was a ramp somewhere nearby um, that I could use. But uh, what I noticed right off the bat, as soon as I moved in, was that the person who lived above me uh, would have like knock down, drag out fights, sometimes quite literally, not just figuratively. Uh, and they would make so much noise, like on, on nights before work at like two in the morning, like a body would slam against the ground and you would hear it. It's like, it's like, it's like a pro wrestler hitting the mat at a WWE event or whatever, you know, and like hitting the board, <laughs> which, which is how I learned indirectly, uh, one of the ways, the quality of a tribute property built and, and, and construction, um, and so I had a neighbor above me who would like yell or someone would come over and yell at them and, 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 and scream and throw things and slam things. And that went on for several months. And I remember when I heard, when I heard a body hit the ground after I'd been there like two weeks and it was, and it was a night before work. And then I heard some get up cursing, cursing, cursing. I called the police. Cause I'm like, I've, I've been in some situations where. Uh, that sort of tone and that level of intensity uh, was followed by violence, you know, that I observed occurring. And so I was just trying to do the civic thing. And um, I don't know if the cops went there and checked it out or not. But so anyways, so like 
the next week I, I come back to my place one day after inspecting a roof of a, of a person down the road in the same town. And, uh, I'm walking up and there's this old lady, older lady, <laughs> kind of old lady. And she's like, are you my new neighbor? And I'm like, Oh, so I walk over, I shake her hand. And, uh, and then she goes, Oh, I'm the security guard here. And she's like, Oh yeah, there's a cop above us who lives here. And I used to be a cop and we keep a pretty close eye on things around here. And she's like, eyeing me up and down. <laughs> I just got back from inspecting some guy's roof. Like I'm working, I'm, I'm doing productive things here. And this person is like talking like I'm potentially a threat and we keep a pretty close eye on things around here. This person was a tribute properties employee and tenant. And that's important. And I'll get to that in a second as well. Let's see, I'm at six minutes here. Um, so I was just like, uh, okay, uh, well, yeah, I keep a close eye on things too. Cause I'm a disabled veteran <laughs> and, I, and I walked off. And ever since after that, after that interaction, it was always rudeness, uh, scumminess. Like sometimes I, I would be unloading my, my car, my car trunk and be going to, about to walk up the ramp and she would walk out and then she would stop in the middle of the road and she would stop and like tie her shoe and stuff. And, uh, and she was always rude to me. Okay. <laughs> and so the fact that she would say, we keep a pretty close eye on things around here. And I have literally a WWE or a UFC match going on <laughs> above me on a, you know, the night before I have to go to work. And I'm wondering if people are going to be harmed up there. Uh, and it's like, well, really Robo Karen, you didn't, you didn't hear that, uh, spectacle the other night. doesn't look like you're doing your job too good. Um, you know, and so that set the tone for everything. And, um, and beyond that, there was, there was a neighbor who had, I think a daughter who would just sit out and block the walkway and, and, the, and their walkway was already not what, whatever you would call it, ADA compliant because it, it was like, it wasn't three feet on, on either side with, you know, two, two wheelchairs or, or whatever going past each other. However, however it's calculated, but regardless, when you, when you live around folks who are so obnoxious, um, that they, they don't understand that you probably just shouldn't sit out and block the walkway and smoke cigarettes. Like, and then like the roofing inspector sales guy has to go to work wearing his, his sports coat. And now he gets to smell like smoke and then try to like navigate past you. And he doesn't already walk that great to begin with. And so I tried to address that with the, with the ladies at the uh, front office that did not get dealt with. Um, they blamed it on me. They said, I blame the wrong person because I, I didn't know who it was. And I was like, well, you know, maybe it's the person with the pentagram stickers on their door because I had a neighbor across the way who had pentagram stickers on their door. <laughs> <laughs> and that was okay with tribute properties, you know? And it's like, and I never said, Hey, you need to have, these people should remove those, those Satanist stickers from their door. No, I just realized as, as a man of, of, of even moderate intelligence, it's not classy. It's, uh, it's, it's not actually inclusive if we want to play you guys game. Cause I know how y'all are. Um, but anyway, so not obnoxious tenants all around obnoxious people who, who can't deal with the problem. Finally, the person stops blocking the walkway. I think maybe things are making progress, but the people upstairs are making so much noise. And now let me step back and just say the building construction itself is bad. Okay. Like I could hear, even when they weren't slamming things down inconsiderately, which they did, uh, the building, if they would walk, if my upstairs neighbors would walk from one room to another, I could hear like every step I could feel every step. Like I could sense you know, like thing, like movement. And it was so loud. And I've lived in over 25 different countries and, and, and I've, and I've traveled on a budget. And so I've seen, you know, the lengths of affordable construction in countries like Asia and, and Europe and Eastern Europe. And I got to say the tribute property I stayed at is not even as good as Albania. Okay. Albania. <laughs> so what the heck? So, so I got obnoxious neighbors, uh, who the office won't deal with, or they've sent them a letter or an email or something. 
Um, nothing got really done with that. Eventually it kind of quieted, but by then I was over it. Um, you know, you've got, you've got a building that sucks. My air conditioner went out twice. Actually, it didn't even work the first time when I got moved in. And one of the ladies at the office was like, I went by and checked everything. <laughs> and I was like, gee, I wonder what that's about. And then, oh, sure enough, the AC wasn't working in early May. And then the AC went out again in August. And like their excuse was, oh, your unit was the next to be renovated. It's like, well, then don't rent it out. You know, have a spy and have some integrity. Don't rent it out. Take it, take that listing off and don't rent it out. It's as simple as that. So we got all these problems, all these structural problems. The building sucks. The AC fails. You know, I had a leak the entire time I was there. Even after I requested, they changed the uh, the shower knob. Um, my dishwasher only worked on like one or two different modes. Sometimes it just wouldn't shut off. <laughs> the ice maker in the refrigerator, it literally sounded like, like somebody doing construction outside. Like it took me like a week or two to figure out what's that noise. <laughs> like, and then the, and then the, the evaporator units outside your window where you're trying to sleep, like they resonate the, almost to an intensity, the same way that the HVAC at the Walmart rat cage does outside the curbside grocery pickup. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, okay, change your belts or something, bro, or, or replace the equipment. So anyways, so you got all these problems, you're trying to deal with it. Nothing's happening. And mind you, I'm getting a rental assistance, but I didn't make it six months there because it was so bad when the hurricane uh, came through and it barely came through anyway, uh, the front area flooded. So you couldn't even get out of the apartment and your car if you wanted to. Um, something happened and access to the gym was not possible for like 10 days. Okay. Like the, the key fob stopped working. You could not go to the gym. You couldn't do anything. And this is where it really, really bubbled up. And that is where I was. I went to the gym. It was the second night I tried to go to the gym and I would go like late at night to avoid everyone. Cause again, I don't walk very fast. And, uh, that apartment complex is very diverse, bro. And when I say diverse, I don't just mean people who don't look like you. I mean, people who broadcast middle Eastern prayers in the fitness center when you're just trying to work out in North Carolina and you're like, where am I? So, and they leave their little McDonald's cups behind, you know, everything, no one cares. Nobody cares about anybody. You know, it's just, it's, it's your typical, uh, you know, internationalist apartment complex. <laughs> so, so anyways, I try to go there. I try to go to the gym and their security Karen walks, you know, she's like snooping around the property because they're the key fobbed areas, I guess still don't work. But, how is anyone supposed to know that, you know, because it's not like, I don't know, but anyways, it doesn't matter. Cause if I, I would have walked up to the gym a second time, seen that the door didn't open and go back to my car and leave, like I'm not going to break in. But, but that person who lives next door to me is creeping around the building now. And I'm like waiting for her to like get done with her surveillance or whatever. And she walks up to my car over to my window and, 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 and mind you, the walkways are very narrow. So it's not like I just get out of my car and try to walk around her. Um, but I don't want to talk to her anyway. And she walks up to my car and she's like, you can't get in even if you want to like, like barking at me shouting. And I'm like, what the hell? So I rolled down my window. I'm like, what? And she's like, you can't get in. It's not working. And like, like, like putting, putting me down. And I'm like, you know what? I'm like, tribute property sucks. And Mark Maynard should be ashamed of himself. Okay. And, <laughs> and I let, I, and I let her know. And, uh, you know, and I could tell like, she was still like hovering. Like she was going to like thinking about like, what she could she do to like do something to me or get me in trouble or like come at me, you know? And I'm like, and I leave and I sent, I sent tribute properties a message. Okay. And mind you. Uh, I sent, I sent this message to, uh, Carol Greer, her corporate person, the corporate person, the person who, when I said, Hey, could you talk to the person who's blocking the walkway when they're smoking, like about not doing it? And she's like, you know, smoking's allowed here, right? Like that was her response. So, wow. Some leadership there at corporate, um, and, and, the, and the, and the communications director, right. And I let them know, I'm like, I'm like, I just tried to go to the gym last night and your, and your security Karen was up in my face. Like, and I let her know how I feel about tribute properties and Mark Maynard and the quality of product and service you got around here. I got a letter from their law firm that accused me of verbally accosting 
the security Karen and the community and, and the communications director for tribute property goes, Oh, you mean Deb? Like how unprofessional is that? Like your own, your own worker employee is up in my face. I'm just trying to go to the gym. Like I'm working full time. I'm trying to go to the gym and do my little basic limited workout. And you're, you're like up in my face starting problems. And I was like, that's it. Okay. And so I decided right then and there, I'm leaving. I'm out. I let them know. We arranged it to where I could leave because it, now here's the thing. I had three more free months of rental assistance. Oh, I know you tribute properties. Ladies love free stuff, right? But what does it say when the free stuff is not worth sticking around for? And I'll go back to living in my car just so I don't have to live at a tribute property. And I want to finish off with how their practice and all of their nepotism. Okay. Because as soon as you move in, you get a folder with all these businesses that they're related to dogwood moving, uh, diamond landscaping. I remember the person said, Oh, by the way, our maintenance guy's wife does dog sitting and watching. So there's a flyer in there for you. And it's like, I just found that strange and I found it nepotistic and it certainly was. And that's how, definitely how they behave the entire time. Like they can't solve real problems. They can't be competent, but they can try to get you in trouble and send you, send you a letter from their lawyers that say, don't verbally accost someone, you know, just sitting in your car and someone comes over and starts talking crap to you. And so you respond to them, you know, they say, oh, you can't do that. You know, like, like they're, they are totally unprofessional. Uh, they're anti-American. Uh, they do not respect your rights. And for them to be starting trouble like that, again, I chose to leave with three months free rent. And if you, and if you're one of those, uh, and it's strange, all these connections and who owns all these companies like dog, dogwood moving and diamond landscaping and Mark Maynard and, and all this and how, and how there's a law firm in Charlotte that'll send you a letter. Okay. Uh, it's not Wilmington, right? So, so it seems to be a kind of a capital based hustle, definitely no customer service or, or, or superior product. But what about all these indentured servants you have from tribute properties that not only work for you, but also live in your, in your, uh, units. Because I saw a Google places review from a former employee from 2020 of some guy saying he signed a contract, a dual contingency with tribute properties to live and work at tribute properties. And he said that he found a job that was better and paid more. And so he switched to that and tribute properties kicked him out of his unit and he had a family and they gave him like 10 days <laughs> to move out. Can you imagine like, Hey, by the way, you just got this promotion. Oh, by the way, in 10 days, you're homeless. And, and, and whether or not he, you know, you got him to sign his soul away on the bottom line for you. Cause I know that's probably how you like to do it. You like, you like your cheap labor. You like your cheap robo Karen ex cops who they can only be mean to the nice people, you know, and they're nice to the mean people. And your whole entire and, and and the morning I get the letter from the law firm that says don't verbally accost our our security Karen, um, who comes up to you in your car when you're minding your own business and starts barking at you. <laughs> no, that's the verbal accosting. Uh, you know, I remember I walked out to the dumpster and the dumpster was overflowing with trash, and I have a picture of that. I don't want to put that uh, in the blog post, which is in the link below, so you can check that out. You know, they have time to put lawyers' letters on your door. Um, cause you just want to go to the gym and, uh, and the dumpster is overflowing the trash and there's trash on the ground and you can't even, you can't even leave your apartment complex during the, during a hurricane because it's flooded up front. <laughs> I mean, literally so much wrong that you can't with free rent, I will leave. You know what I'm saying? And that is the ultimate that tells the whole story. Now let's, now let's talk a little bit before I get out of here about how Mark Maynard runs some nonprofit uh, or is heavily involved in that. And it's like, Mark Maynard, buddy, why don't you get your for-profit businesses working first before you try to help somebody? I know you care about helping people just so much. What about your tenants who pay rent? Or in my case, had someone pay rent on their behalf? You know, and, 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 and did that, did that affect how y'all treated me? Did y'all brief your security, Karen, my next door neighbor up front and be like, oh, keep, make sure to be extra rude to this guy and treat this guy like he might be a problem. Make sure he never feels welcome. Well, it worked because I wouldn't give you my money. I wouldn't even give you some social organization's money. And you know what? I'm going to be honest. 
I have slept better in my car this past week than I ever slept at my Tribute Properties shoebox apartment at Dog Shit Place Apartments. All right, so everybody just keep that in mind when moving forward. And, and, and also, make sure you read these reviews about how they have no dog breed restrictions and how people's dogs get attacked, okay? Because I don't have a dog, but I read those reviews and uh, nobody wants to have their dog maimed or killed because you got folks walking around and oh and tenants will talk crap to you in the parking lot too that's something else i've noticed it's not just their robo robo karen it's other tenants and people with like big dogs angry dogs and they'll be barking at other people's dogs not for me no thanks and tribute properties you know here's my tribute to you